الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد أما بعد honorable brothers, elders, mothers, sisters, dear children السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته we begin on this blessed day of Eid as always by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who alone is worthy of all praise and by sending the choices, salutations, blessings, salawat on our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallayta wa sallamta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim fi al-alameen innaka hamidun majeed. My brothers and sisters, the second Eid of the, bl the blessed lunar Islamic calendar is upon us. This day of Eid, my brothers and sisters, as I was walking in, somebody said this Eid is not as hyped up as the first one. My brothers and sisters, this day of Eid, on the 10th of Zul Hijjah, this is our Eid. And as we all know and we probably heard as children, this Eid signifies the symbolic sacrifice made by Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. And we have probably all heard the story, I don't need to repeat it, that Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam was asked to, to sacrifice, he was put through a test to sacrifice his beloved child. And when he was about to go through with this sacrifice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to sacrifice a lamb instead. And from there, this, this tradition of sacrificing animals for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came about. It has been practiced by our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the famous hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is narrated to have said, Inna awwala ma nabda'u bihi fi yawmina hadha an nusalli. That the first thing we do on this day, the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, is we come to the musalla, the masjid, and we pray. We offer the Eid Salah. Thumma narji' fa nanhar. And then we leave, we go back home, fa nanhar, and we sacrifice the animal for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But unlike other religions, this sacrifice is not a sacrifice of blood or meat. We are not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the blood and the meat of this animal, it, has, it doesn't reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This, this is symbolic, this is a gesture. The, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need you to spill blood and sacrifice this animal, this, uh, this life of an animal for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is it? then why is it that we are required to do, to do this sacrifice if the blood and the meat is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires then what is it why is it that we are required to sacrifice this animal and the, the ulama the scholars for the past uh, 14 centuries they mentioned that for those who who can who can afford to who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the ability to it is wajib to carry out this sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they must do this indeed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is narrated to have said man wajada sa'atan wa lam yudaha that the person who has been given the ability to do so and still does not sacrifice, فَلَا يَقْرَبَنَّ مُسَلَّانَ He does not need to come close to our musalla on the day of Eid. So indeed, this is a sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it means something much greater, my brothers and sisters. Imagine, now the reason I'm giving you this imaginary scenario is because uh, living in this part of the world, we are not afforded uh, this type of Eid. Imagine you are living on a farm and you purchase an animal a couple of months in advance. Maybe 
during the month of Ramadan or immediately after. And you spend the next three months feeding this animal, taking care of this animal. This is perhaps, you make it your favorite animal. You develop a bond and connection with this animal. You know, you feed it the best of food, you take care of it, you wash it, you make sure it's warm at night. You do all of these things. And then come the tenth of Zulhijjah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you to sacrifice this very animal that you spent the last three months taking care of. Imagine the feeling you would feel when you yourself are slaughtering an animal that you spent three months taking care of its every need. That sacrifice, my brothers and sisters, is what is required on a daily basis from the Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know even us in our daily lives we can understand that wherever a successful person he cannot become successful without sacrificing something that you know he sacrifices his sleep he sacrifices his time with his family he sacrifices his entire youth and why does he make these sacrifices to attain something so to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we sacrifice our desires our whims the way we want to live and we make sure that our lives conform to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything that is required for us to do this is what this sacrifice this small symbolic sacrifice should teach us that something that we developed a connection with the moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us we are ready to sacrifice that connection. Why? Only because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to do this. So this, my brothers and sisters, is in essence the sacrifice that we are looking for. My brothers and sisters, on the day of Eid after this sacrifice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَكُلُوا minha." You eat of this meat, وَأَطْعِمُوا الْقَانِعَ وَالْمُعْتَرِ And you feed this meat, you feed this sacrifice to those who ask for it and those who do not. Both of them are needy. The person who asks you for his need and also the person who his uh, sense of self-respect stops him from asking you for this sadaqah and for this meat. You feed both of them. My brothers and sisters, what is being looked for over here is a sense of community. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to develop a sense of community and one very important thing that I wanted to talk about today just for a few minutes my brothers and sisters we have been talking about this for a number of weeks we have been talking about this for a number of weeks that when we when I say the land of Sham to you what immediately comes to mind for most of us is the current situation that our brothers and sisters in many parts of the world but especially Syria are going through right now a very very difficult time when I say Sham immediately in the minds of the learner the verses of the Quran come where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says subhana alladhi asra bi abdihi laylam min al masjid al haram ila al masjid al aqsa alladhi barakna hawlahu that blessed is the being that took his prophet by night from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa, that masjid that we have blessed the surroundings. This is the land of Sham that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of the land of Sham in many other areas as well, Syria. When we, when we think of the land of Sham, what should be coming to our minds is this is the land that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is narrated to have said regarding Aya Tuba al-Sham Glad tidings be to the land of Sham and the people of Sham When we think of the land of Sham we should be thinking of Bilal bin Rabah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu the muaddin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who chose to live his, the remainder of his life in this blessed land the likes of Abu Darda al-Khazraji radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who chose to live the remainder of his life in this blessed land. And indeed, my brothers and sisters, many of the people you see today fleeing their homes, many of them, you can ask them regarding their lineage. And it is very possible that their lineage will meet with the likes of Abu Darda, Bilal bin Rabah, and the many other companions who resided and were buried in the land of Sham. It is estimated that 11 million people 11 million people have been forced from their homes. Some of them are internally displaced and some of them have made it out of the country. 
And you know, 11 million is a huge number, my brothers and sisters, to put it into perspective. To put it into perspective. As of July 2014, it is estimated that 4.6 million people live in the province of British Columbia. 4.6 million. So the people who have been forced from their homes exceed the total inhabitants of our province. 11 million people. And you know, my brothers and sisters, at times like this, I can only imagine the Eid that those brothers and sisters of ours in that part of the world are going through. So for this, my brothers and sisters, it is my humble appeal because we have a large number of people here today that our organization, your organization, the BC Muslim Association, the largest Muslim organization in BC, we have kick-started a sponsorship campaign for our brothers and sisters from Syria. And many of you have been following the news. Some of the roadblocks that we as an organization were facing just a week ago have been removed by the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With your help, we can do this. We are in the process of obtaining a sponsorship holder agreement, which will expedite our process of bringing our brothers and sisters to this part of the world. And I am optimistic, my brothers and sisters, that at this time next year, many of our Syrian brothers and sisters will be sitting amongst us, inshallah. So for this purpose, my brothers and sisters, this is the only announcement I have today. That out in what the donations that you just made, these are local donations. These are for the masjids and every masjid collects on the day of Eid. Outside as you are leaving, as you are leaving, there is a box that says Syrian refugee crisis. All of the money donated in that box will go only and only towards the sponsorship of these refugee families. And you know, the cost is roughly $30,000 to sponsor a family of four, including their first year of expenses and residence. But through various blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have been able to lower this cost through this the sponsorship holder agreement as well as help from the federal government to 15,000, 50%. That means, my brothers and sisters, that with the same $30,000, we can now, instead of four, we can bring eight people to our country. And hopefully they can enjoy the privileges that you and I and our children enjoy over here. The privileges of safety, security, financial stability in education. So my brothers and sisters, this is the only announcement I have to make today. That donate generously. If you need a tax deductible receipt, then speak to the brothers and, and the sisters. Speak to the sisters, uh, the responsible sisters upstairs. We all know who our community members are and speak to them that we want to make a donation. If you have anything else to bring to the table, then speak to the brothers, speak to me, and we can see how we can utilize your efforts, your services, your expertise as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease the pain and suffering of our Muslim brothers and sisters in various parts of the world. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala return izzah, respect, and glory to the Muslim ummah. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.